gonna try to make a video this morning. Um, anyway, as most of y'all know, YouTube did not approve us to get monetized. Uh, something to do with gun content I got. Um, they sent me a little thing talking about how you can't show people how to make guns or homemade silencers or put bump stocks on or anything like that is against their policy. Well, I don't have any videos showing any of that, but anyway, I went through and deleted a couple old videos where I changed my AR grip or changed something on uh, my Glock or whatever, something like that. So I'm going to apply again in a month and we'll see what happens. So anyway, other than that, business as usual. Like I said, uh, this morning here I'm going to make a video. Um, yesterday we canned our first batch of homemade sausage. We had never canned sausage before. So uh, hopefully it turns out alright. It looks pretty good in the jar there. Um, anyway, I was watching Zombie Farmer's live stream last night. I don't know if any of y'all caught it or not, but, uh, Real World Prepper brought up a, uh, thing about salt curing meat, and, uh, Zombie said that not a lot of people do any that anymore. It's a dying trade, which it is. Uh, it's a dying tradition, just like a lot of things in general. But, uh, here at our place, we do a little of both. Uh, he was talking about canning as a, a better way to go. And it is a good way to go. Uh, we do a little bit of both. Uh, we steal salt and smoke some of our hog meat, the fat back and side meat and uh, hams and stuff like that. Mainly just because I like the flavor. Um, you know, we'll hang it up and smoke it and then uh, we'll take it down a few weeks later or something, you know. We'll let it hang while it's cold. But once it starts getting warm and stuff, we'll take it down. So, you know, the bugs and rats and all that stuff don't get in it. And uh, slice it up and put it in the freezer or whatever. I uh, might try to can some this year too. But, anyway, it's a dying tradition in general. Uh things like that might be coming back a little bit now uh, with the way the world's going now um, I mean, he said on there that the guy that processes his deer or whatever uh, was down probably 50% or something I can't remember what he said but anyway it's not as many people bringing deer in and I don't necessarily know if that means that there's not as many people hunting or they're just butchering at home um, since we get all the grinders and stuff like that my brother-in-law's been uh, you know processing their own deer as far as grinding and making sausage and burger and stuff like that and I think that generally might be a lot of what's going on is uh, they're kind of doing it at home but yeah that was a pretty good live stream uh, I don't know how long he'll have it up but you can go back and check it out probably uh, it should be up on Patreon if you're one of his Patreons, but I've been following him for a long time and he's been following me for a long time and he's a really good channel. Uh, I enjoy his stuff. We talk right much back and forth and everything. So if you hadn't checked him out, check him out, Zombie Farmer. Like I said, <clears throat> morning video. Um, honestly, I was planning on getting up and going work on some more fence, but I just kind of slept in a little bit uh, till 8 o'clock, you know, not too bad, but sometimes it's good just to get a little bit of rest. But anyway, before this video rambles too far, um... As most of y'all know, last year we started processing our own hogs. You know, I've uh, butchered deer and stuff like that in the past. Last year we learned how to do hogs. Um, this next step 
is we've got that steer and we're going to learn how to butcher that ourselves and be self-sufficient as possible we have the goats but none of them have had a kid since we've had them I think the billy we had wasn't any good we got another billy and he ended up dying for some reason we just went out there and found him dead so uh, we're probably gonna borrow a billy from uh, our buddies and see if that does any better because we want to uh, you know have some goats and I've never tried goat so it's gonna be a new experience but we want to uh, raise them and you know make one a weather and, and butcher it and everything but anyway um, if you're planning on doing this stuff at home uh, whether it be deer or you know hogs or cows or goats or whatever I believe the knives make a whole lot of difference I believe it's uh, in good quality knives now not all of them have to be expensive to be good and that goes both ways but anyway I used to uh, doing deer and stuff I you know did every part of it with a big skinning knife as a Uncle Henry skinning knife I don't have it here right now but the blades like that wide on it and that does not work the best for everything uh, the thick blade kind of makes it harder to do some stuff but anyway this here is one of my favorite knives this is a Victoria Knox boning knife you can find them on Amazon and some other places you see how the blade is made it works real good uh, cutting the skin away cutting the layers of fat off um, cutting the meat out cutting tenderloin it works really good the blades kind of flexible not flexible as a fillet knife but kind of flexible but you know it's really sharp it's really easy to sharpen we just run it through a little sharpener a time or two and it's good to go but this knife here is like I bought it last year for like $28 and I think now it's like 30 something but it's still a really good knife for your money this here is a old hickory version of a uh, a bone and knife which is supposed to be a really good knife but it wasn't all that expensive but at the same time I think it's too expensive for what you get this is supposed to be made in USA Ontario knife company old hickory you know all that good stuff but I'm just not digging the Ontario knife company to be honest uh, I bought a rat 3 from them and that thing broke uh, while I was batoning a little bit and I made a video about it when it happened and everything and you know people said that you uh, shouldn't baton with it but something like that is a woodsy type knife and if I can't baton a little bit with it I don't want it I've got a SC3 and I don't have any problem with it I've got a Gerber strong arm and that thing is like a tank but anyway this knife here I don't know if you can see in here on the video but yeah that's how loose the handle is and we just bought this knife when we uh, did hogs this year so after two hogs that's uh, the shape it's in and all of them have the rust on the blade it doesn't matter what you do with them just the steel or whatever and then I guess it doesn't have a protective coating but they all just rust up like crazy good morning but yeah so that's my advice during our butcher process we use you know different knives we use that bone and knife and some regular butcher knives some small skin and knives work good and uh, a sawzall works good for cutting through bone and things like that um, with the hogs I use a long blade uh, to cut through 
and cows will be the same way we need that long blade and stuff and uh, I have a hand saw meat saw or whatever it is butcher saw I've never used it but I've got one and we use the uh, Cabela's brand uh, carnivore meat grinder it's like three quarter horsepower uh, number 12 so that's kind of what we use for our butchering process and stuff so maybe that helps you a little bit other than that stay prayed up prepped up and strapped up see ya